Hello, folks and participants. It's, it's my pleasure to be with you. I'm very glad to participate in this first um, virtual annual conference. Uh, I think that's fascinating. Uh, certainly, we're doing everything differently these days, and I like to think that the Intelligent Transportation Society, the, the technology that we developed to, to do remote video for intersection surveillance and interstate surveillance, has contributed, uh, but certainly things are different today. I'm going to try and go through some of these 10 items. 10 items is pretty easy. I did it that way back in, in 2012 because I was trying to be organized and trying to be able to give myself a grade. Um, maybe you can help me with that when we finish with the 10 items. We were coming off of a, a pretty rough uh, patch in 2008, and the, the Economy was beginning to recover. We had a good participation in the the meeting in 2011, and uh, I guess this was would have been eight years ago, eight and a half years ago. And uh, I'll start going over those before I get uh, too boring. Uh, my first prediction uh, was that I would not be working, and I get 100% on that. Uh, I am totally retired and uh, glad to be that. Um, I am glad to be able to participate uh, as a as someone on your conference and not as a voice from the grave, as uh, uh, Patrice suggested that I might consider. So I get 10 points out of 100. My second point was that young leaders would have emerged for ITS and for the transportation industry. Um, that certainly was an easy prediction to make. There were an awful lot of good leaders at that time, and I'll mention several of those in, in the third item, but uh, it's, it's good to see that I still know uh, a lot of the folks in ITS, uh, Winter Horrible, uh, Tom uh, Udell, Mark Stark, Brooke Martin, and, and I have worked for a long time on a number of projects. Keith Rowland, one of your directors, uh, uh, will remember me, I hope. And, uh, um, We'll look back on some of the things that we did together. Uh, Mike Holt, your state chapter representative, and I worked together. Uh, Dino Pampolini, please say hello to him and, and uh, let him know that I appreciate the fact that he's working so hard in the, in the uh, organization. So those are all young leaders will have emerged, and, and uh, the old leaders are still around a little bit. I understand Kenny Voorhees is going to be reading one of these. So maybe he can collaborate on some of the things that we have thought about. The third item that you'll look on if you have a copy of this is that that transportation leadership in, in Georgia will have changed significantly. At the, the time of the writing in, in 2011, Gerald Ross was the commissioner, and I mentioned in there that that uh, the deputy commissioner at that time, Keith Golden, would continue to advance, which he did. He became commissioner and, and did a wonderful job. Todd Long, I predicted that he would uh, still be in the private industry. And so I'm going to give myself a check on that and uh, uh, as being correct. Number four was that ITS would be continue to be a viable alternative to, uh, method of improving capacity and efficiency uh, and would would still be built, being built as standalone projects, but that uh, that there would be a shift to consider ITS as a standard part of every project that was uh, going to construction. And I hope that is true. I believe it is true. So I get a correct on that one, too. I kind of got out on number five. And I kind of went out on a limb, um, but as it turned out, it was OK that personal communication devices would be even more prevalent than they were at the time of that writing. Um, my prediction was that everyone above the age of 10 would have their own uh, personal electronic communication system. Well, I, I that's wrong. Um, 10 years old is uh, way too high. Uh, I, in fact, I've got uh, a grandson that lives with me. It's five that has at least two phones and uh, walks around with one in his hand while the other one's recharging. Uh, I mentioned the fact that uh, that was going to, to run some of the other devices that were in practice prior to 2011 out of the business. Uh, pay phones. Uh, I actually uh, 
enjoy looking for pay phones now. They are obsolete and none of them work if you do find one. Uh, roadside call boxes are a technology that went away. So maybe I don't get a full 10 points on number five, but I, I do think that I was at least partially correct. Number six, that the days of government agency installing their own private fiber optic trunks would be waning. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that there's a world of fiber out there and available and that the, the speeds of communications that are uh, being used are amazing. Uh, Tom Seaver told me uh, a year or so ago that he was using um, in the signal box standalone cell phone connections and was getting good video of the intersections and that it was providing reliable uh, signal control so that he could go to virtually every signal in Gwinnett County. And uh, that was part of this prediction that I made in, in 2011. All that's kind of tied together with number seven, that wireless networks would be more robust, more reliable and faster. At that time, or at the time in 2011, we were uh, using G3. I think everybody now uses G4, and there's an awful lot of G5 on the market. I understand that there's a uh, generation, I guess we could call that G6, that would be um, is being developed, and, and we'll see better and faster communications for cell phones, I'm sure. All of, all of us seem to exist uh, with an electronic device. The fact that I'm making a video recording now to speak to you on a virtual network and a virtual meeting, and I'm doing that on my cell phone by itself is, is pretty amazing. Number eight is that power to devices would be less of an issue. I think at that time I was talking about uh, remote devices that were becoming much more efficient in their power usage, uh, like traffic signals. And certainly that has enabled power backup, battery backup for almost all of the uh, critical intersections in the state of Georgia. I see those going in. Uh, nobody lets me look in the box anymore, but um, that's pretty fantastic. I'm going to take a 10 on that one. I mentioned that on the national front that I hoped that 2020, that the recession would be finally over. Uh, well, it, it was, and it's, it's back. Um, but we are all very fortunate uh, that we have the electronic ability to, to do things remotely, including the, the use of monitoring the, the freeways. Uh, the one thing that we can't do remotely is, is what the, the HEROES and the other uh, emergency response agencies are able to do. They have to be on the site. They take the risks. I did not talk about that, but uh, I had hoped that the world markets would be stable. I'll let you judge on, on that. Now, maybe that was just a, not a prediction, but a hope. And number 10 was also a hopeful. Hopefully cars would be more efficient and the state would be considering its next Transportation Investment Act for uh, the coming years. I tried to look that up and found that the FAST Act uh, was enacted in December of 2015. I uh, looked on the FHWA and U.S. Department of Transportation websites last night, and shame on you. I don't find anything that talks about that. But I did find that, that there was uh, an announcement by the Transportation Secretary yesterday, which uh, Ms. Chao, that announced that a billion dollars was being uh, allotted for projects in 44 states. So there is a lot of progress that's being made. Well, finally, uh, I, as I closed the letter, I said, I hope my friends and acquaintances would remember me uh, as someone with integrity and who tried to do a good job. Um, I'm fully retired. I've tried not to, to interfere with uh, anybody's uh, work. I try to stay out of the traffic engineering field and uh, ignore problems that I find. But uh, I wish y'all the, the, the very best of a meeting and uh, continue to do a great job from ITS. And, and uh, to that, my old friends, I say hello and, and uh, be safe and be well.